from Anaheim, California, it's theCUBE, covering Nutanix.next 2019. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix Next here in Anaheim, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. We're joined by Faramaz Madavi. He is the Senior IT Group Director, Cadence Design Systems. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. My pleasure, nice to meet you. So tell our viewers a little bit about Cadence, based in San Jose, tell our viewers a little bit about your company, Cadence Design Systems. So Cadence has been a, a company in the Bay Area since uh, about 30 years ago. So we make software to enable semiconductor companies to design, test, and build chips. So most techn you know, technology that you, buy, you see in uh, Fry's Electronics, it has some cadence solution in it. So you guys have a lot of legacy in uh, your IT. Talk about the Nutanix relationship. So our journey with Nutanix started about three years ago. Uh, I had actually explored Nutanix at a previous uh, company. I've been with Cadence uh, three and a half years. Uh, so liked it, but there was really no opportunity to do much at that time. Uh, the company was very new at the time. Um, but at Cadence, we identified some opportunities to, uh, to explore uh, uh, Nutanix. And um, it's been a great experience so far. We, we actually are running a lot of our critical op business applications on Nutanix, so we're all in. What was the door opener for, what was the door opener for you, you guys there at Cadence? What got them oh. in? The, um, the overall architecture looked good in, in, a, in a presentation level, uh, so it was worth exploring. Uh, but you know, it's a new company, new architecture, uh, you have to kind of go into it carefully. So it was a matter of identifying opportunities that were maybe not production, not super business critical to start, but as time goes on, you build confidence and you do more and more. So today we're using Nutanix, as I said, for business applications. We're using it for VDI, uh, a lot of our Zen desktop uh, uh, you know, instances are running on, on Nutanix today. Uh, we use it as what we call tier zero, so a lot of our shared services, you know, um, DNS, Active Directory, those sorts of services are running on, on Nutanix. So um, you know, we're looking for more and more opportunities to expand it. So I always like to know how this actually helps you and your company do people do their jobs better, more quickly, more efficiently, more productively. Yeah. Can you sort of walk us through what life was like before Nutanix and what life is like now in terms of the, the staffing and the overhead and the support? Yeah. So I would say there's a couple of different you know, big benefits. Uh, one is we're in a cloud uh, era, right? So a lot of companies are looking for workloads to move to the public cloud and we're no different. We're, we're constantly looking for what, what makes sense in the public cloud, what makes sense on-prem. On so from a support and, and uh, skill set standpoint, it's very important to be consistent. Basically have the same support model for both on-prem as well as public, uh, public cloud. So that's one big benefit that Nutanix offers because the same skill sets to support, let's say, an AWS environment is the same as uh, you know, the Nutanix uh, support environment. Um, the, the other critical thing is, just like any IT organization, we're challenged with limited resources, you know, doing more with, with less, so um, the ease of administration, ease of support, uh, just the inherent reliability of the technology uh, allows our staff to you know, sleep more at night and you know, work less uh, often during the weekends, so uh, the overall support overhead has, has reduced significantly. So that's, th those are the, the biggest things I would say. Those are two very important things. Those are the two biggest things that we went into this, um, this engagement with. But, you know, we're pleasantly surprised that performance has exceeded our expectations. You know, um, you know I did expect reliability. Uh, I didn't quite expect this level of performance improvement. So that's been excellent. So uh, again, we're looking for more and more opportunities to expand it just given that experience. You said the staff sleeps well at night. How have they reacted? What are some other anecdotes from the staff? Free, more free time? Um, is it management plane? What's the, what, was the, what was some of the feedback from, the, from your team? 
Well, I mean, I don't want to give the wrong impression. It's not like they're not Drunk working. Beach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's Cocktails. not quite the <laughs> scenario. Um, but you know, I would say it's gone from uh, a crazy environment to something a little bit more humane. Um, uh, so. Uh, I think not only with the staff, but just across the company, you have those who are uh, who kind of buy in and uh, go into it uh, positively, and others who are more reluctant. And that's no different with the support staff. So I think just their own uh, confidence level and um, you know their um, uh, desire to do more with Nutanix has, has increased as they've had more experience with it. It's interesting, I did a panel yesterday with some customers from Nutanix, and it was a mix, they had a big bank, uh, mid-sized company, and, and, and a good big corporate kind of IT. And it's very interesting, the legacy, where, was more, where there was more legacy, there was a lot of these dependencies. And they were looking at time frames for pushing stuff out like eight weeks to two months, I mean two hours. So eight, they went from eight weeks to pushing any kind of rule propagation or any kind of new stuff, eight weeks to two hours. Yeah. And that was a huge number. Are you, are you guys seeing anything around in terms of performance and crew on the time side uh, with Nutanix? What are some of the things that you're getting benefits-wise operationally? Well, the more we do, the more cookie cutter it becomes. So, um, you know, each migration is easier and faster and so on. And that also has to do with confidence, right? The very first critical business application that we moved to Nutanix, the level of testing we did was insane. Uh, now, it's less so. So uh, for multiple reasons, that migration experience is much more efficient, much much quicker today than it was early on. You know, one of the things we hear too, Rebecca, was um, you know, Nutanix is a new vendor, you mentioned new company. They're 10 years old, so still new relative to the, right. the bigger guys. Getting it pushed, getting it through, getting it approved by executive confidence from uh, the executive management around, wait, what's yeah. this new, new company? What's the benefits? All kinds of, gyrations of approvals and um, sometimes politics and you know, legacy kind of factors in. How does that work on your end? How did that go, um, getting Nutanix through? Was it a yeah. struggle, was it a challenge? Was, well, take us through that. So, uh, as you mentioned, the fact that it's new technology, new company, that has its own set of uh, challenges from, for some application owners and executives. You know, why take the risk? Why not do the same thing we've done, you know, always? Um, so, so that, that's one big, uh, big uh, challenge. The other was, there is a tendency, especially early on when Nutanix was selling it as an appliance as opposed to license only, um, there is a tendency to view it as a hardware solution and it's exactly not that. <laughs> it's the exact opposite of that. It's purely a software solution. That's where the value is. Uh, so it's very easy to get trapped into that hardware discussion where people will kind of compare with servers and storage versus Nutanix. Uh, so you have to kind of change that mindset and, and show the real value that hyperconvergence provides. Uh, the ease of administration, the you know, uh, high performance, reliability and so on. Um, and then as you make that argument and convince more and more people, again, you have to, you know, start small and expand. Uh, but that, that was some of the main challenges, I would say. When you're talking about the migration experience, and you said when we, when the first business critical application, it, it was a long time, we tested it, we really worked at it, now we have a bit more faith that, it, that it's going to work out. But can you talk about some best practices that emerged in terms of how to migrate and migrate well that maybe other companies could learn from, from Cadence Design Systems? Yeah, well I would say the best practices aren't unique to Nutanix. Um, any migration process has you know, various phases in terms of planning, testing, and so on. And I think just having that discipline, a well-documented, consistent process, so that you're not starting fresh every time there's a new migration uh, initiative going on. But I think Nutanix makes it easier, just given the, uh, especially the Prism management tool. Um, but I would say it's not particularly unique to Nutanix. You know, IT organizations just need to be well disciplined in a, in a migration process. One of the things that uh, you mentioned software, which is a great point, that cultural shift. It's not a hardware box, and there's probably all the best practices around evaluating hardware. Yeah. Software is becoming more and more central to IT. 
How do you see IT evolving? Because you got cloud right on the horizon, you got public cloud benefits there are clear. If you have Greenfield, you had legacy stuff, we got containers, containerization happening yeah. as a trend. Um, lift and shift versus you know, evolve the life cycle management of apps and workloads are, are now under a new kind of view with software. Yeah. How is IT changing and, you know, as, a, as a practitioner in the field? Yeah. How do you look at the evolution of how IT is going to change? So my side of the house is the infrastructure and operations side, and they tend to be historically kind of manual. You know, different network administrators, storage administrators, system administrations, that, uh, administrators. That is all changing and all becoming more developer uh, skill sets, scripting, automation, things of that sort. So I think that's the biggest change that's going on in, in IT today, is kind of changing the skill sets and kind of viewing it as a full stack as opposed to just storage or just network. Um, so having that holistic viewpoint, having that ability to um, develop automation that works across the stack, uh, I think that those, those are the changes that uh, traditional infrastructure groups uh, need to adapt to. Uh, I was talking to a customer yesterday and he was a young, young guy, he was I think in his late 20s. And I'm saying to myself, you know, 10 years ago <laughs> he was in high school or college. Um, yeah. And so you see a new generation coming up where they, they gravitate towards DevOps. Right. And so they get that. So they don't have that dogma, whoa, we went with this vendor. So they kind of have this new thing. Can you, any observations that you can share on this younger generation coming into IT or new talent that's coming in, that's developer oriented? What do they like? What's, uh, What's the work style? What do they gravitate to? What are some of the tools they like? Yeah. What's the mindset? So I think they can teach us, to be honest. Um, we have, you know, the older folks like myself <laughs> have a tendency to look at the way things have always been done, right? So having that, uh, that fresh viewpoint is great to kind of come into it with a DevOps mentality, you know, off the jump. That's, uh, I think that we, sh we should kind of welcome that and take advantage uh, of that. Um, you know, uh, for Cadence in general, um, we are a pretty mature company in terms of our personnel. We don't have that rapid turnover of, of, person, uh, of you know, our, our team members. Um, so we are trying to actually, um, you know, we welcome that new talent uh, so that we can kind of get that uh, DevOps mentality uh, in-house and, and kind of mature it ourselves. So how, we're, in, we're in the beginning of that journey. How do you work together? Because, I mean, you're not that old, first of all. <laughs> but but <laughs> if it, this, this is a time where we have multiple generations together working in the workforce. It's these digital natives that we were talking about, the, yeah. the, uh, the people who get technology so innately, uh, yeah. they grew up with it, versus the Gen Xers, the boomers are still there, uh, the Gen Ys that are emerging and graduating now. Yeah. Yeah. How is it a challenge at, at Cadence to, to get all these people working collaboratively, productively together? Well, Cadence is an extremely technical company, uh, and I'm referring to our customers. You know, they're all double E, you know, yeah. masters and doctorate engineers. Um, so it's a very technical environment. We try not to really focus on the technology, actually, but to look at you know, the business objectives. The, you know, the, what are we trying to achieve? What problems are we trying to solve? As opposed to, oh, here's a cool technology. How can we use it? Uh, you know, the, the, the mindset is a little bit different. We're looking at the business side first, and then using technology to solve for those problems. Um, so once you have that focus, regardless of your experience or your age or background, you, you work together you know, to, to achieve that end goal. What do you think about the show? We're here at Nutanix Next in Anaheim. Um, what's, uh, what's your verdict on so far the content, the positioning, you're a customer, what's next for you guys? Yeah. Obviously very loyal customer base from what we've found. Uh, people love the product. What's next? What do you think of the show? Uh, I'm very impressed. I wasn't expecting it to be this large. Uh, you know, I went to a, a local smaller version that uh, was in the Bay Area last year. Um, that was pretty impressive too, but this is amazing. Uh, I like it because you know, uh, IT uh, leaders get sales calls all the time and we kind of get bombarded, so the tendency is to ignore those. This kind of gives us a chance to, at our own pace, kind of see who the key partners are of the Nutanix, look for opportunities and meet some of these other vendors. Uh, so it's been uh, both educational as well as kind of entertaining. You know? Excellent, well thank yeah. you so much Faramars for coming on theCUBE, we really appreciate it. My pleasure, good to meet you guys, thank you.
I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. We will have much more of Nutanix Next here in Anaheim coming up in just a little bit. Thank <laughs> you.